Okay, it's one o'clock. We have 56 uh, members that have joined us today. That's fantastic. And I know several of you are uh, in rooms with several. I'm also about to lose my voice, so I hate that it's being recorded that way, but that's the way it is. Um, this is going to be an important first step in us thinking about how we'll be monitoring what's happening in our districts as far as our literacy programs are going. And it's very important that we all see how that's going to happen. So that's what these are for. Just kind of a setup of the day. Uh, Roland and I will be monitoring the chat box. <clears throat> so if you have questions, please put them in the chat box. Again, you can make them to me or him or to everyone. And we'll be monitoring those as we go. We may have time for an unmiked uh, question and answer period. But of course, we can always be reached by email and, and that sort of thing afterwards as well. So we're going to get started. We've got almost 60 people. We are recording this webinar and I will send it as soon as it's prepared and rendered. We'll send that to the districts. We also want to let you know that our next one is going to be pre-recorded. Won't be live in front of the studio audience or anything like that. So you don't have to register or be here at a certain time. We're going to send that just as soon as we get that prepared. So hopefully it'll be sooner than later. Um, I would say a week or so after this one, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think that'll give us the time to uh, answer any questions and make sure that we're answering it. Well, that we're answering everybody's questions. Yes. So and we just want to make everything very clear. <clears throat> so we're going to start by just get, showing you our agenda for the day for this hour that we have together. I can't forward those. I, I, okay, I was thank trying you. to figure out which, which button I had to hit to move okay. it forward. <laughs> it's teamwork. So this is what we're going to be talking about this hour. So we're going to do an overview of what monitoring is. And when I talk about managing the day, we're talking about managing the days that we're monitoring. So what that will look like, who will be involved, um, and literally talking about how it's a, for minute by minute, basically how that would look. Of course, team selection has to be a part of this conversation because one of your big first things is who's on this team? Who do I need to recruit? Who needs to um, understand all the ins and outs, what's happening? Who needs to substitute? All the logistics. We're going to talk to you about some things that we'll need also to help us uh, be best prepared when we when we walk in there we want to have everything ready to roll uh, waste no time when we get there and the last part of the day we'll be talking about scheduling so that's actually how we're going to organize those school visits and, um, and and like I said we may have a few minutes there at the end for questions so Jackie just so everybody knows my name is Roland O'Daniel I'm with the collaborative for teaching and learning and we're partners with um, KDE and Johns Hopkins as part of the evaluation team. Uh, so I'll be, uh, CTL will be um, helping with the logistics and organizing the visits that the district will be doing, which is why I'm here. Definitely, thank you for that. I should have done that introduction. Um, I just assume everybody knows everybody, right? So this part, and you can go to the next slide if you want to, and it begins to think about what monitoring is. I'll let you look over this. And this, again, this is something you'll have at your disposal to go back to, um, to check out anytime. But we have outside evaluators and monitors. And CTL is that uh, partner that we have for the monitoring process. What's so important, and we certainly want teachers to absolutely understand this part, is that this is not an evaluation of teachers. We're looking at our program across Kentucky. How well are we doing with our comprehensive literacy program? So to do that, we have to see what's going on. So it is more like professional learning. So you are going to receive training on some uh, tools that you'll use around observations of literacy strategies. And it, this, we're, this is all about this process of observation, not evaluation. It's hard not to feel like you're a part of evaluation when someone walks in your room. I was a teacher for a long time. I, I certainly know how that feels. 
but I also know how it feels to be fortunate enough to get to visit another teacher's classroom and all that I learn. And that was a part of the people who wrote this grant that was a very important piece to them was that it could be a part of the professional learning. So I'm excited that six, um, at least six people from your district will get to be a part of that. And we'll talk a little bit later about who those six people are, but it will be um, a very good experience for them. Roland, is there anything I'm leaving out of this part? No, and I, I, I want to just second your uh, focus that this is on uh, formative assessment and this is not any kind of summative or evaluative. This is an opportunity for districts to visit each other, see some of the great things that the districts are doing. And I know in, in some of the sharing days that you've done with uh, uh, the districts that, that there's been some great things going on and we want to make sure we're highlighting that and letting everybody see uh, the progress that's being made and how people are adjusting to some of the, the difficulties of implementing a project like this. Something this big and this comprehensive across multiple buildings and, and multiple uh, levels. So I'm and even, looking forward to this part. Yes, and even though we've talked about monitoring from even in the RFA days, from the very beginning we've talked about it, um, I don't know that everyone understood that you really will have this opportunity to visit other districts. I mean, visiting with outside your school inside your district is one thing, but to actually go to a neighboring district um, is, I think, a very special um, event. So I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of this process as well. And so Jackie, we will be gathering data though, and, and it, this is where I know people can feel a little bit intimidated. Um, it, it is not data that is gonna be used to uh, evaluate if anybody stays in the project. Again, that is not the point of this visit, but it is just to give the evaluators, Johns Hopkins, an opportunity to think about where are we during this portion of the, of the, of the project. We know we're very early in implementation. Uh, in implementation science, three to five years is the, is, is the standard that you look at. So we know six, seven, eight months into implementation, we're not gonna see comprehensive literacy in every classroom. That is not the expectation. But what we wanna do is give everybody the idea of what are the things that we will be looking for um, and that the evaluators will be looking for early in the process so they can make sure that they are working towards that goal um, as they are delivering the, the instruction for their students. Definitely, and what we'll be concentrating on, those, those elements, those components of comprehensive literacy, are the things you're also writing your reports about. And I know all of you aren't writing those reports, but it's something your district has to send back to me and say, this is how we're accomplishing this goal, and in turn, that's what I submit to the department, the U.S. Department of Ed to say, this is how Kentucky is doing this. Uh, this is how we're monitoring it. And this is what, in the end, uh, we evaluate to be our success. So there, there are lots of pieces that are going to play a role in our evaluation. Just for instance, um, I've been really pushing lately to make sure I've got all the teacher professional learning logs. So you might be a teacher on here today that said, wow, I've been getting a lot of feedback from my district person to get my logs either on Google or updated or whatever. And that's why, because that's a part of what we are presenting as part of our evidence. So if you're in cohort one, what you um, include in your professional learning log is looked at in a very evaluative way to say this is how many hours someone has spent and here's the type of learning that they had. So those are very important as well as what we're talking about today with the monitoring. So all of this comes together um, very tightly. It was easy for me to do, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> so uh, all of the data that we will collect during the, the day in your district um, will be shared with the schools and it won't, and again, it'll be, uh, we'll, we'll do some brief analysis to put it together and, and do some averages and, and that, um, but we'll share all of that information with the districts back to you so that you get uh, a chance to see what everybody was seeing when they came into your buildings. Um, and again, this is just an opportunity for us to measure where we are today or where we will be in, in February and March. And then as we progress, give us, give the project something to compare to. Um, 
So there are three main tools that we will be using, and we just want to give you all a, a look at those. Um, just so you know, we'll make these tools available to you um, uh, before the, the walkthrough. And the second set of webinars that we do will be around these tools uh, with more description. So don't feel like you have to be an expert um, on these tools as a result of this five minutes or six minutes that we spend on this slide. Um, we'll be looking at three different levels. Uh, the first level that we'll look at is the classroom level where we'll be doing observations in that cohort one set of teachers. Um, we'll be doing observations in their classrooms. Um, and the day will be um, designed, and I'll talk more about that in the next slide, um, so that uh, we'll be able to see as many teachers as possible as part of the process. Once the group um, has been in some of the classrooms at that site, this is going to be uh, not necessarily a comprehensive observation where they'll see every teacher. We just don't have that kind of time. And we'll do um, some, we'll have to do some selections in some of the bigger districts to identify um, schools that we'll see, uh, depending on the size of the teams, and then how many classrooms we'll be able to get into. But this is part of the tool we'll use as in the classroom observation. Before they leave, before that team will leave that school or that uh, early childhood provider, they'll also do a building walkthrough and look for some of the characteristics of, uh, of the environment. Whoops of the environment in that building, looking for evidence of uh, print-rich environments and those kinds of things, student work. And, and again, we'll go into more depth around these tools um, in the next set of webinars. As the group comes back and does this for each building, then they will go on to an, another site. And at the end of the day, they will come back and each group will do a, a literacy performance guide. And this performance guide is around the uh, characteristics of comprehensive literacy as defined by the Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant. So all of this information uh, is, is derived directly from their definition. And this instrument was tested in the first Striving Readers Grant in Kentucky in the early 2000s, and then refined and practiced across multiple grants after that. Um, so these three tools will make up the majority of the, well, We'll make up a majority of the data that you'll receive uh, feedback on. And these are the same tools that the uh, evaluators are looking for uh, data as well. And I'll throw in there, someone had asked the question, uh, will, will I be putting these in the Google Drive? And that's a possibility. Uh, that's not been our, that team drive has not been our easiest communication tool. So you'll definitely be getting these, um, I'll be sending them directly. Um, so you'll have them, and then you'll also have, uh, are they, they won't have paper copies, right? They'll have electronic copies. Um, no, actually, so on that day, we will be doing paper copies. Um, oh, yes. We, yeah, we, we and, and looking at the logistics, because we'll be uh, having to do 45 district visits in the span of six weeks, in order to be able to accommodate that, we don't have, we don't have enough iPads for, um, three or four visits, three or four um, site visits at a time, which will be running as many as three, or well, will be running as many as four site visits on a day. Um, so we'll have to try to figure out a different way. And so paper just makes a lot more sense. Yes, but that is something, yes, that you will have, and we'll have more information around these tools, particularly on the day when we come together. And we'll share these tools with you this afternoon. I mean, th these tools are, um, they're, they're part of the grant, so it's not a, not a problem to share them with you. We don't want anybody to feel like, oh, I didn't know that was coming. Mm -hmm. um, there's, again, uh, on, this, on the literacy performance guide, the tool that's up now, we'll look at um, three of the subdomains. Uh, we won't be looking at foundational literacy, which is that first subdomain, um, but we will be looking at content literacy integration. Uh, we won't be looking at interventions on that day that we're there. Uh, we'll be looking at instead instructional culture and what as well as classroom culture again we'll give you all all the information you need um, in that next set of webinars to be able to use these tools they're not very they're not overly complex i um, mean they are very intentionally designed around instruments that are part of kentucky's work already so when you look at um, classifications for accomplished and exemplary and developing that language is not accidental it is tied to danielson's framework I mean, and to give schools a comprehensive understanding of where they are. 
and you'll have a chance to um, calibrate um, before and during these uh, monitoring sessions as well. I know sometimes, even as a principal in an evaluative role, as an evaluator, it was, uh, I always wanted to do that, to make sure that I'm on track as well. So we're gonna do that. I know this is where we'll spend a little bit more time um, is on this next slide. And this is the schedule overview. I know everybody's, this is where everybody is, um, is concerned and focused and wants to know so that everybody can do a good job what the day is going to look like and then what the process is going to look like. So we recognize that people are going to have to drive and the triads that have been grouped have been grouped um, with that in mind and, and Jackie I don't know that we added that set of, of data to the to the PowerPoint. No, we I don't send that out later. Yes. Okay. Um, so the we did the best we could, and, and Jackie and I had quite a bit of conversation and, and trying to make sure that everybody um, had, didn't have too far a drive. There was a couple districts that are going to have longer drives than others, but we, there wasn't a whole lot we could do about that. Um, but we tried to make it so that people could drive up that morning, and we can get started about 8.30. We'll meet in each district at a designated site, and CTL will work with you to identify that site. Um, the entire group will meet there, so that'll be about 19 people. They'll do a little bit of a face-to-face -face review of the tools so that everybody's comfortable in what they'll be expected to do during that uh, visit. Everybody will receive a folder with all the tools they'll need for that day's walkthrough um, and their schedule and their classroom schedules and maps of the sites that they'll be going to so that they can find their classrooms. Um, we'll spend about 45 minutes to an hour um, there really, but we'll try to get that down to about 45 minutes. It shouldn't be um, too hard if we do a good job with the logistics folders and get that to everybody and everybody shows up on time. They'll leave for their first site about 9.15, and that's going to look uh, different depending on uh, the districts that we're in. So in some of the smaller districts where there's one or two elementary schools, for instance, we will probably meet at an elementary school. Um, and then that group can just go ahead and immediately get started. Um, but as we discussed, in a district like, for instance, Harlan, where there's about a 30-minute drive between a couple of the schools, uh, we'll definitely pick the site. We'll try to pick the site as best we can. For instance, it might be Everts um, Elementary. Uh, so, and that'll be the, the central location that will start the day. That way, the district, the team that has to go out to Kaywood Elementary or another one of the elementaries in the district um, they won't have as far to drive. And, and we'll take all that into account as we go through. Once the teams in each level um, are, are they're, they're, they meet, we'll, we'll work to divide them up so that they'll go in groups of three, um, no, no less than three because we want to have some triangulation of data. Um, so they'll go to their identified or def uh, assigned sites, and then they'll start walkthrough visits. So for instance, if we'll give a 30 minute drive to the next site, and it generally does not take that, but just in case, we'll give 30 minute drive to the, to the first site, and the entire team for that site will do the first observation together. Then they'll discuss what they saw and submit, and then they'll break up and do individual um, observations in classrooms. And those observations will last between 15 and 20 minutes, and they'll go through their schedule, and so that the um, site walkthroughs for that building should be completed by 11:15. That gives you an hour to do two or three observations depending on what you're seeing. Once that site visit is done and, and the, the classroom observations are done, again, the team will come back together to do the building walkthrough, and that really is talking around the environment that they observed and the kinds of comprehensive literacy um, settings that they, they were able to see. They'll then leave around 11.30 for their second site. So you'll notice that we have lunch in there. Um, so we, you've got an hour to um, get lunch and get to your second site. And, and Jackie, do you want to share a little bit about our thinking about lunch? 
Yeah, and honestly, anytime somebody sees a schedule like this, they zoom in on lunch anyway. Um, but for real, you do have to think about um, your location because um, places are different. They may not have restaurants in between, you know, the schools where you're going. You may have to think about taking something or finding out if there's a little store that's, I mean, honestly, you're going to have to think about that before you go. I don't want you to be disappointed and there not be anything, um, maybe a fast food restaurant or something there close. So um, just a little research. We can try to help with that too, but just a little research of your area before you go could be really helpful uh, for that. I'm taking that note. That's a good idea. We'll try to identify lunch options um, as best we can. Well, then we'll repeat that same process. Um, as the group comes to the second site, the first observation is done by the entire team. And again, that's a triangulation issue for the evaluators so that they can get a little bit of a feel at how people are um, uh, assigning different levels. And, and we'll do the best we can to get that reliability training in there and, and get people comfortable with that, but it's still um, a good, oppor good opportunity from the evaluator's perspective to have each team do two observations together. They can discuss the observation ratings afterwards, and then they can do their individual observations. That gives us till about 1.30 to get that second set of observations in at the second site, and then we all come back together at that central location. That central location uh, then starts the school performance guide discussions. And we'll do three school performance guides um, for each district. And so each level, um, early childhood, elementary, and middle and high, will fill out a school performance guide. Um, and that, that way we, the, di the districts can get some feedback broken down by each, di by each level and not just overall how, this, how the district is doing. Um, but that's, that's each level will submit one of those school performance guides. And again, it won't be the entire document. It's a pretty, it's a pretty big document. It's 11 by 17 front and back. So we are only going to do half of those indicators. And again, it's those three sections around content, content literacy instruction, um, literacy environment, and classroom in, instruction. Didn't give it. It's content literacy integration, instructional culture, and classroom instruction. Um, and then we'll finish. And so we should be finished at each district by 3 to 3.15, depending on how the conversations go around the school performance guide data. There's a lot on this slide, and there's a lot, I think, on the next one. But it will be, um, we, we decided to leave it that way so you could come back and have all of that there together. And again, we'll share this PowerPoint with everybody um, as well. So I believe this is you, Jackie. Okay, someone had just asked this question, um, who is going to be on our team? So this is a little discussion about team selection. You need to think about your three groups of early childhood, elementary, and remember that middle high is together, <clears throat> but you want to, um, you want to be able to have some middle, some high observations in there. But you'll need at least two people from each level, early childhood, elementary, middle, and high. So that's your team of six. The classroom level should make up at least two members of the team. Now, the, we would love for most of the members to be teachers, but we also know there are people who say, or who do have um, substitute issues and that kind of thing. But um, the more teachers, the better is how I would um, look at that. The district and school leadership could be split if possible. Um, we do want principals involved and you may have instructional coaches, but um, you're really trying to focus on your teachers being a part of your team, the biggest part of your team. Yeah, and, and we know it's, it's difficult to get some of the, some of these people out of the building and, and we recognize the difficulty. That's why there's some flexibility there. But we also know that when looking at a, a three-year project like this, um, those school leaders, when they are able to see other places in action, are able to support the work 
um, better in the long run. So the more of that population that we can include as well as the classroom teachers, uh, we think the stronger the teams will be in the long run. Um, and probably the, one of the most difficult areas is with early childhood having teachers out of that room. So um, anyway. Becky, I have not looked at the chat. Are there any questions? I'm, I'm taking chat? care of the chat. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Thank no you. Problem. All right. So what will we be doing when we are uh, trying to get pull this off? So the goal is that we will begin the district visits mid-February. We know trying to plan anything this large in January and, and really even in February is going to be difficult. So we would like to start the first round of observations uh, beginning February 15th through March 1st. And we will, so we're looking at this as 15 triads, which means in that round one, we have to get 15 visits in. That's 10 days through 15 visits. And as I said, we will have teams of three and, and if needed four out at the same time so that we can accommodate that. We know days like Monday and Friday are not good days to do observations and, and visits. So we'll try to stay away from those. That's why even though it's a two week window, if you take out Mondays and Fridays, you're really down to about six days. Um, one of the first things we'll do is we'll send out an e a reminder email in the middle of December just to let you know what the process is going to be and the information we're going to have and to kind of get you uh, thinking about and pulling some of those resources together uh, earlier. Uh, we'll need, for instance, um, cohort teacher one schedules with the teacher name, their classroom, and the bell schedule as well as lunch schedule um, so that we can we can kind of put these uh, uh, observation schedules together for for the, uh, the observers. Um, and we'll, we'll put a, a schedule together for the observers and we'll give them a folder with all the information they need. The only thing they'll have to do is um, write in the teacher's name um, as they do their observation. Um, we really won't even use teacher names. All we'll use actually is the building and classroom number. We're not gonna report any of that data and nobody's gonna keep that data. Um, but this is not about individual teachers. Again, this is not an evaluation. This is formative assessment. So we try to do as much as we can, but we do need to know where the teachers are and how to get to them. So it's, it, they, they will, there will be um, some of that, of that identification. Yeah, and it'll um, be really important that we do identify cohort one teachers successfully because that's, that's gonna be that first layer of data that we'll have. So if we're just visiting everyone, it'll be really difficult to sort out what uh, professional learning, how it's really had an impact on the classroom instruction. So we wanna be really careful with what information we give back. I say we, but as districts give back to, to me and to Roland. Right, and, and, and that's a great point, Jackie. We don't want to go into a building and, and randomly select teachers and the three teachers we select for one group aren't participating in cohort one. That would not necessarily reflect, would not make the school look like it's doing very much when in fact they may be doing a whole lot. So uh, this is again, not a gotcha. This is not anything that we, we want the teachers to be very aware of the tools in advance. We want the teachers to be very aware of the schedules in advance. So we'll send you all back what those schedules are as, as much as we can. Um, and, and the quicker we get that information, the quicker we can get it back to you all as well. We know that there's a, uh, some schools and districts have policies about sharing school maps. And I, we recognize that. Um, so if we're not able to get the school map from you, we wanna make sure that there's a school map available when observers come to the site. Um, and it's gotta to correlate to the information above. And I, and I, I, I we do quite a few walkthroughs and it's very common for us to get sent a map that is two or three years old and that when we get to the building, the teachers um, are, have moved or, or whatever. So we'll need to make sure there's a little bit of coordination of that information. That's why we'll send you that information in, in December and you can begin putting that together. And then we will very intentionally follow up at the beginning of January. Um, at the, once the, the, the holiday break is over, um, we will get started fully when communicating with the districts. So you'll get that first email in December just to remind you it's coming and it's on the horizon, but then you'll get more intentional follow-up emails and, and calls 
uh, beginning in January. Our goal is to have the entire process scheduled by the time we start that first round and by the 18th. So we'll, we'll work on that first round of schools and, and districts, um, make sure we get those schedules done first, then we'll work on the second round and the third round. But our goal is to have all those logistics done um, before we get to that first round. Definitely. One of the things that, that's inevitably gonna happen is we'll put together a schedule and a teacher will be absent. Um, that's gonna happen and, and we, we, we're, we know that and we will try um, to have some options for, for the observers. And in that case, if that does happen, we'll just double up people and let them let more than one person do an observation on another teacher. Um, so it, it's, it, you know, we would like to have as many teachers there as possible on the day of the visit. Um, it's also gonna be important that we try to schedule the visits to your sites um, and that they're aware that we're coming and that there's nothing major going on that day. We'll ask you before we schedule what days are bad during that window. Um, and then we'll ask that you not just give us one day, because remember, we're juggling 15 schools during that, that six day cycle or seven or eight day cycle. So we can't just have, oh, you know, Clark County, not picking on Clark County, but if Clark County were to say, well, we are only available on this Wednesday, then, then that makes it very difficult for us to um, put our teams in the right places to be successful. So we'll ask you for uh, days that are bad. And again, we know that, that Sometimes you have things are going on, and, and that's why schools are really busy, and we'll ask that question. But if we get a, a small, a little bit of a window, we can schedule it, and we will uh, go from there. We already know, Jackie, I think that a couple of districts have shared they've got some audits or other things going on during certain times, and we'll make sure that they're not, uh, that we're scheduling around those. We, again, we recognize schools are busy places. Right. Roland, we did have a question. Someone like a little more um, information about the feedback schools will receive. Do you care to explain a little bit more? Sure. We will, we will not write a long narrative because we won't be doing the ones, won't be the ones doing all the data collection, um, but we will take all of the data from those forms and compile that for the districts and send that back to you in a usable format. So wherever possible, we'll present it as a table. And when there is certain data that we know um, uh, that can, can be looked at in a certain way, we'll send it as a, as a graph. And, and so we'll look at that and, and send it to you. I, uh, we've started the process with Johns Hopkins, but we have not finished what that report's gonna look like yet. Um, but so, so they have to weigh in on that as, as well. And again, it's, uh, to, it's, we wanna make the data as usable to the end users, the districts and schools as, as we can. Uh, there will be an opportunity for the observers to write comments. We will um, go through those comments, but we won't do a lot of editing on those, but we will just make sure that they, one, don't identify specific students or teachers um, and that they're constructive um, in their feedback. Um, I do but other than that, we won't, there won't be a lot of editorial from us. Sorry about that. We do have this question. This is a, an interesting one. Um, does the same team have to do each round or can they be mixed up? I think there's value in both and one having one team go through the entire process, but I also recognize that three days for some people is a lot, especially a classroom teacher. So we would, we we're open to any one of the, any of those options. Please recognize that when you're in your own district, uh, your team will participate a little differently. Um, that they won't necessarily have to do the observations. We know that that can that can be tough sometimes. Um, so it, that that day will be easier on your team than the other days. The other thing is, if your cohort one teachers are part of your team, that would take them out of the out of the classroom, and those are probably the time that that you want. You, they're the, probably the teachers that you want some people to see. So we'll make sure that those teachers have an opportunity to stay in the classroom. But I think it would be fine if you have to make substitutions. Well, we're taking questions. Does anyone else have, these are really good. Thank you. If you wanna put something in the chat box or unmute. I, I think I have, to, I have to set them up so they can unmute. Okay, well we can just put in the chat box, it'll be fine. Okay. Okay, so you can now unmute yourself if you uh, if you want.
I think her question too was about from round to round. So yeah, there, there, definitely there will be times when teachers will change. It's going to happen. Hi, Jackie. Yes. Will it be possible for you to, or who, whomever is planning the district visits, we be able to talk to you guys about the logistics of that, or is that all on you? Will we have any? Input? We have a large district, you know that Christian County, so not all schools will be seen, obviously. And so we just wondered how that would look when it comes to you all making decisions about where we're going those days. Yes, we will absolutely be in touch with you. Once once January hits, it won't be just emails. We'll be in touch and, and, and have those questions. So no, we, we want this to be successful for the districts. Again, um, we're not just saying this is not a gotcha. This is really about, it's not necessarily just a showcase. I mean, it, we, we want it to be successful, but it is around what does instruction in the buildings look like and uh, getting feedback from the districts around some of that decision making is, is absolutely a priority. We also have another question from Warren County. What happens as a result of these observations? What are the next steps? What information do schools get? Now we did just talk about the information the schools get. Um, I don't know, what are next steps? I guess just the feedback. Yeah, so uh, the, from, the evalu from the evaluator's perspective, this gives them some data about what is happening in the districts um, and they, they will look at that again, holistically, not looking at individual districts to compare uh, and say, well, uh, Warren County is not doing as well as, as uh, Russell Independent. And that's not, again, that is not the goal, but what they will do is look holistically and they'll be able to say, we're seeing implementation at this level in this many classrooms. We're seeing implementation at this level, at this many classrooms at the elementary level, right? So they'll look at it from a project perspective and that'll give them a little bit of insight when they start looking at the analysis of the um, summative data. When they look at the analysis of the summative data, if they're seeing strong impacts at the elementary, and they are also coupling that and seeing strong impact fidelity uh, of data, well, that's, that's a good um, correlation for them to look at and to report on. If, however, we don't see strong implementation at the middle high school level, and we don't see change in uh, assessment data, then that may be a causal or I mean, another correlation for them to report. So they'll look at those kinds of things. And again, the data, this is from, uh, from our perspective, the, from the evaluation team perspective, this is to inform how well the project is doing. Um, one of the things that will happen is this will go back to Jackie. And if there is, again, poor implementation data coming out, then it'll be, upon us as, as part of the project team to help figure out how we can increase that. We have a question, another question about monitoring process during second year. We haven't really gone into that very deeply, but um, like, will this be pre post? Do you want to kind of touch on that? Yeah, so th this will happen again next year. Um, there won't be a pre, well, Technically, I guess the first one could be your pre and then the second the second visits next year could be your post, but um, it'll be again a formative. This is not part of the summative evaluation. So this isn't a true pre post, but it is uh, just letting the project know how we're doing at that time. Um, we specifically chose not to do this in the fall to give schools a chance to begin implementing. So next year, you're going to have um, two dosage effects. You're going to have that cohort one group who will be implementing for the second year with the projects and they will hopefully be working at a little bit higher rate, but they'll also be able to impact and influence that cohort two implementation. And in fact, what we already know is some of that's already happening. Um, so when the observations go through next year, we'll probably again wait for that same timeline to give that second cohort a chance to learn and implement so that we're not hitting them too early. Um, again, hitting them in February, March, they've had a chance to learn some of the strategies, um, implement some of the strategies, get some coaching, get some feedback, get some help from the other cohort, so that when we look at implementation um, in year two of the project or in year two of implementation, we should be able to see an increase in um, proficient and exemplary or accomplished and exemplary practices. 
Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, I've got a couple questions. I want to ask this one and then I'm going to read this long second one, but uh, will the observations be only cohort one teachers? Yeah, yes. As much as we can, we, we, we well, we don't think it's fair to do a, a comprehensive literacy instruction um, observation on a teacher that has not been part of a, a literacy initiative. Now, if in the conversation with the district, they say, you know, this teacher has, is not participating in the project right now, but has been a, uh, a Kentucky reading project or Kentucky writing project teacher for years, and, and you know, we, we're happy to, she's happy to be observed, then we're happy to put them in the mix. If there's already strong literacy in the building, um, there's no reason to be limited to just the cohort one. But we'll, again, as um, the young lady from Christian County, I couldn't, I didn't get her name written down, um, mentioned, um, we'll, we'll work with the districts to try to, to make sure that we're being, we're visiting um, cohort one teachers. That was Katie Ralston. She's always caused a little trouble, so write that down. <laughs> um, this question, clarification question, each district is required to provide six people to go in other districts to participate in a monitoring team, correct? Each, district Each feeder pattern is expected yeah. to pr pr um, share with six people. So it's not just, there are those three or four districts that are gonna be um, more than six people because they'll be doing them um, as separate uh, feeder systems. So that affects um, four of you. That's a different feeder system, has two. Each district is required to commit a six person team for a total of three days, or is it three days each round? Oh no, total of three days. And really, um, really it's just two days. The, the, when you're hosting um, the, the walkthrough, uh, your team really doesn't participate um, as, doesn't have to participate as heavily um, in the process. You probably want to participate, especially if you're in that first or second round so you can get the experience. Um, but, but that's, uh, again, if you've got two teachers on your team of six, you're going to want them in the classrooms um, so that they can be observed as opposed to being part of the observation team. So we'll want to make sure that we give them that opportunity. Uh, but we really encourage district level and, and school level administrators to participate as well. And I think that answers the last question that came in as well. So one of the questions that, that you and I had, uh, Jackie, is what happens if we we want to have and send three people um, at a certain level? So for instance, at middle high school, we want to send three people because we want to make sure we've got a, um, a district level administrator and a school level person from the middle and one school level person from the high school. Can we send um, um, three from that level and still send two from each of the other two levels? Absolutely. Um, we kn know that the the teams need to be a minimum of six, um, but that's going to be up to you all if, if you want to send an extra person. Um, will we still need six people to observe during our hosting day? No, no. Um, I think, um, we, I think we need to go ahead and say that we need at least three people, at least one person from each level, and that's a logistics issue as much as anything. Uh, but we again, we recognize with those classroom level teachers, especially um, that oops, apparently I hit something. Um, <laughs> especially in those classroom level teachers, they're going to want to be in the classroom on the day of the observations. Um, this comes from someone who has two feeder patterns. So if we have two feeder patterns, we'll actually have two days of observations in district but we still yes. have two other days outside of district or four. So each feeder pattern will be its own triad. So um, I'm gonna use Floyd County just because they're the first one that comes to mind. So the Betsy Lane feeder pattern and the Floyd County Central feeder, Floyd County um, High School feeder pattern, they will each go through the process. So there will be three days for Betsy Lane um, and three days for the Floyd County High School. Does that make does that make sense? So it'll be a total of six visits for Floyd County, um, two in district, and then each feeder pattern will visit two other districts. 
Um, so she said, but will we still have two other days out of district or four? Oh, no, she said, yes, thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. One of the things we'll be sending um, very soon, we meant to put it in this PowerPoint, will be the triads. Um, so you'll be able to see who you'll be paired with. And we really did, well, I'll say Roland did spend a lot of time on Google Maps trying to make it the best, shortest routes and the best pairings possible. And keeping in mind that part of this is to get an opportunity to see another district and visit another district. So one of the things that we very intentionally did um, was those four districts with two feeder patterns split you all so that you're not observing each other. Um, and, and we know that that's, that does cause a little bit of a travel issue, um, but did not think it was as beneficial for the overall process if you were just staying in your own district all the time. Um, so that was a very intentional um, decision. I mean, we talked quite a long time to make sure that we were comfortable with that decision to, to to do that so I, I when you when you see those teams that was not accidental we're giving a little pause if anyone else we have about um, 14 minutes if anyone does have a question before we close I will say from the logistics and scheduling um, I know we're probably talking to a lot of district level people here we will be very intentional in adding the school principals to the communications for this um, because it's really important from our perspective that the teachers um, and the principals are aware of when we're going to be there um, as much as possible so that there is we don't want this to be oh i just wanted you know we're going to surprise the teachers and they're going to kind of show up and not let them know in advance we want this to be a very transparent process and we also don't want the, the principals to find out about what day they've been assigned um, and then come to find out that they have a, a you know, a full school um, gathering in the gym for, uh, for something that morning and, and won't be able to participate. So we, we will um, include the points of contacts and they'll be the main conduit for the information, but we will also um, in the communications include the principals because we know how important it is for them to be part of that process. Where this will be difficult from our perspective are those early childhood providers that um, may or may not be part of the system. Um, and how you incorporate them in that process is gonna be up to you all. We can't mandate how that is. We know that some of the providers are smaller facilities, and so having somebody not there is not an option. Um, so we're gonna leave that up to the districts to, or the feeder patterns to, identify who should be part of that team, but we still want them to be included in the process. We do have a question for someone who said, could we use more than six observers in order to involve all schools? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and from our perspective, it's just the cost of a folder and the materials, which is pretty cheap. Um, so again, if we know in advance that you wanna have a team of eight or nine or 10, that's fine. Um, what that will likely mean is when they go into a building, especially some of the smaller elementary schools, um, they may be doubling up on observations um, or uh, we'll, we'll try to not necessarily put the same two people together all the time, um, but there'll be two people doing an observation of one teacher. Now they may not go in at the exact same time or they can go in at the exact same time. It's really up to, to the, the team. Um, we're, that, that's, we think, again, I, I think the more the merrier, um, not necessarily, uh, again, this is not about um, gotchas, but an opportunity to see the great things that other people are doing as part of their literacy project. I'm excited about the opportunity to see the building. Anytime I get a chance to go into classrooms, it's always a lot of fun for me because I, I, I've been removed from the classroom for, for more years now than I want to acknowledge. Um, but it, it's great to see some of the work that teachers are doing. And, and I know that um, you know, some of the, the schools that we're working with, they're, they're, they're really excited. So I, I, I can't wait to uh, have the opportunity to, to join the uh, process. 
Yeah, that's true. And from my perspective, I feel the same way because I get a lot of emails from you all telling me about your excitement and you won't believe what happened and this was great or, or whatever. So I know you'll be excited to show um, how those things are working in your building. So I'm very much looking forward to it. We had someone that said, thank you. Sounds like a great process or looking forward to visiting others. Thank you. And if you ask teachers throughout their career how many times they get a chance to do that, it's slim to none. So that'll be great. So the, I know that several people have asked and we've, we're, again, we've done some mock analysis of what we think the charts might look like. Um, and, and we'll, as soon as we have that format done, it'll probably be early January before uh, we get the, the okay from the IRB um, to, to share that. But once we get that, we'll send that out to you again. This is a, a, a transparent process and we don't want there to be any gotchas. So we'll, so you'll know what you're looking for. And CTL will be available um, after the process. So we'll, we'll finish the last of the walkthroughs, hopefully around March 27th. I will say this, um, if that, if there is a week in there where snow happens, and, and, it hap and that tends to happen in Kentucky in February and March, um, we will actually have to move, will likely have to move some of those visits to after spring break. Um, but that will, we'll start crunching the data immediately. Um, so because we're gonna enter it by hand on paper, we'll, we've got a couple graduate assistants that we've been able to um, work work with UofL to identify a couple of people who can do some data entry for us. They'll enter, they'll start entering that data as soon as we get it. Um, and they'll start compiling that data. We will wait until the entire process is over to run the reports. That way you can have a little bit of a comparison of data. You'll have what your data looks like and then what the overall project data looks like. And again, it's not a gotcha. It's just to give you some comparison about what it looks like across the 45 feeder patterns in the, in the project. Um, so that will take us at least three weeks. And again, so from March 27th, it'll take us about three weeks to get all 45 of those run um, and proofed and sent out to district. So you'll be looking for that report around the last week of April. Again, assuming that we don't have any rent snow delays. And if snow delays, we'll move it back a little bit. Um, we have this question, should cohort one teachers uh, be included in the district review team or just district level people? Again, they, they can, it's going to be, an, it's going to be up to you all. You all know how many cohort one teachers you have. And if you want to pull a couple out to be part of that team, that's fine. Um, when, when we're in your district, um, or you can let them stay in the classroom so they can be part of the observation process. That really is gonna be up to you all to make those decisions. From our perspective, we don't have a, a preference. Did, did that answer your question? I think that's what you were asking anyway. I think so. We have a few more minutes if anyone else, she said yes, that answer, answered her question. Thank you. You'll also have a chance to um, either before or after you go back through this PowerPoint or video that you uh, can email us questions as well. So Jackie, we are going to do a Q&A um, in December. Or, so that as you are going back and having this conversation with your team, and then we'll do the, again, the next three shorter videos um, around the instrument, the, the, the tools next week or the week after the next week. Um, as questions arise, please share those with Jackie or you can share them with me as well. And we'll do a very intentional Q&A session um, in December as well. I don't remember the date of that, Jackie. Um, I don't know off the top of my head either. Okay. So but I, we sent that out, you sent that out as part of that initial communication. So as, as you're going back and talking to your team, as questions arise, please let us know. Again, those questions are great for us because that helps us troubleshoot in advance if, if there are questions that we should be taking into account that we haven't. 
so we, we look forward to, to as many of those as we can get. We don't have any other questions in the chat box. We may wind it up for the day. I really appreciate um, there are over 70 of you that joined us for this live webinar. And uh, again, this will be recorded and sent to you very soon. The next one will be recorded so you don't have to register or log in live and we'll send that to you. Okay. Thanks everybody for joining us and I'm looking forward to the process. Everyone have a great rest of the week. You're welcome.